Summary of Six Characters in Search of an Author by Luigi Pirandello From the very beginning, Six Characters in Search of an Author breaks the traditions of theater. The curtain is opened as soon as the audience enters the theater, and the stage is set up as it typically is during the daytime. Some of the players, who are also actors, hang out on stage, just like they would have during practice. The manager walks on stage and says it's time for a practice. They are going to work through the second act of a Luigi Pirandello play called Mixing It Up. People practice for the real Pirandello play the rules of the game in the original text, even though this play is made up. A ridiculous chef's hat is made for the leading man to wear, and the manager says the play within a play will be a glorious failure. The doorkeeper interrupts the rehearsal to say that there are visitors, and a tenuous light shows the fantastic reality of the six characters who come on stage the moody middle-aged father, the veiled and sad mother, the bold and seductive teenage stepdaughter, the distant and grumpy 22-year-old son, and a younger son and daughter who won't speak, the half-frightened 14-year-old boy and the shy 4-year-old child. The father tells the confused manager that they have come here in search of an author and offers to bring you a drama, sir. They disagree on whether the characters are crazy or the theater itself is crazy. The father says that he and his family were born as characters and their author never used them by putting them in a work of art. The characters carry in us a drama that they can't wait to play out. The stepdaughter starts acting out of the blue to make a point. She says that she recently lost her parents and has a passion for the father. Then she sings and dances a French song and says that the mother will lose the child, the boy will do the stupidest things, and she will run away. She says that the son hates the rest of the family because he is the mother and father's only real kid. The mother passes out from shock, and when she wakes up, she starts going on and on about the father's loathsome plan. The father says that the mother's ex-lover, the clerk he used to work with and the real father of the stepdaughter, the boy, and the child, died not long ago. This is why the mother and daughter are dressed as if they are in mourning. He says he put the mother up with the clerk because she is deaf, deaf, mentally deaf. He raised the son, but he became interested in his old family again and started to visit them, like by giving the stepdaughter gifts at school until the mother, clerk, and their kids moved away for good. The clerk died two months ago, and the mother and stepdaughter had to find work to make ends meet. The mother sewed clothes at Madame Pace's studio, and the stepdaughter worked as a prostitute. One terrible day, the father went to the business and saw the stepdaughter. They don't agree on whether he knew who she was or not, and on whether the mother saw their relationship coming or just missed it. The father says that he took the family back and has let them live with him ever since, but they fight all the time. The son refuses to say how he feels and says he is an unrealized character, dramatically speaking. This makes everyone argue with him. I agree with the manager that the characters have enough material for a drama. He or she will put them in touch with an author who can write their story. But the characters say the manager must be the author because he will watch them perform their play and take it down. Scene by scene. The manager agrees, and he takes the characters into his office for 20 minutes. This gives the actors a chance to think and gives the play a break before Act 2. The stepdaughter, child, and boy come on stage when the bell rings to start Act 2. The stepdaughter tells her little sister, the child, that the play is a horrifying comedy. For everyone else, it's just a story, but for the child, it's real. She starts to rant about a stream and then scolds the boy, who has a gun in his pocket for some reason. When the father and manager call her inside, she changes places with the son and mother. The father and manager then argue about which of them will suffer more in the end. The son complains that the father is too sure that he has got the meaning of it all and won't stop letting everyone know about the character's inner drama, their inability to be a real family. The stepdaughter wants the stage decorations to look just like Madame Pace's shop, so everyone comes out and starts arguing about them. The manager tells the prompter to write down what the characters do quickly and tells the actors to watch what the characters do so they can play it later. But the manager says that the characters can't act and that they should leave it to the pros. 
The father says that the characters should play themselves because they are more real than the actors. The father and stepdaughter laugh at the actors the manager chooses to play them because they don't look like them. They then say they have a problem, Madame Pace isn't there. The father starts setting the stage for her by hanging up the actress's hats and mantles. Suddenly, Madame Pace walks onto the stage. The confused actors and managers are questioned by the father, who says they have a narrow view of reality. At the same time, the stepdaughter and Madame Pace start the scene talking in the corner, refusing to speak up until the father goes, which he does even though the manager begs him not to. Then Madame Pace starts to tell the stepdaughter about her upcoming client, but everyone starts to laugh because Madame Pace talks a funny, broken mix of half English, half Italian. The manager says that Pace's speech will put a little comic relief into the crudity of the situation. This time, he is talking about both the play itself and the play within a play. When Pace tells the stepdaughter that a old signore is going to meet her, the mother jumps out and yells, murderous. The actors hold her down, and Madame Pace leaves. The father can now come in. When he goes up to the shy stepdaughter, she tells him that she is in mourning. The manager tells the actors to start playing out the scene again after the characters have stopped. The father and stepdaughter laugh as the leading lady and leading man mess up their lines. The stepdaughter then steps in to correct what really happened, but the manager won't include the implication of a sexual encounter between her and the father in his version. Instead, he says, truth up to a certain point, but no further. When the mother leaves the room, the stepdaughter says that she and the father will show what really happened, even though she knows that this means helping the father hide his sins. The mother breaks down and complains, saying that it's happening now and that her two younger, mute children cling to me to keep my pain real and vivid. This part is called the nucleus of the whole first act by the manager, and the stepdaughter talks about sleeping with the father and feeling bad about it before starting to act it out on stage. When the mother steps in, the manager mutters, curtain here, curtain, which means that he is happy with the situation and wants to end the first act of his play. However, the machinist gets him wrong and lowers the curtain instead. The last act starts with a set that looks a little different and more like a garden. Characters sit on one side of the stage, across from the actors. The manager stands in the middle and tells them it's time to plan the second part of their play. He and his stepdaughter fight about whether the events in the characters' lives should be shown separately in their real settings. She wants to do that, but he insists on putting them all together in the yard. The manager and father then argue again about characters and actors, whether the theater is real or just a game, and finally whether the manager is a person at all. The father says that the characters are eternal and don't change, while normal people change every day and always see their past selves as a mere illusion. The manager tells the father to stop thinking so deeply and that he is crazy to believe that he is a character made up by an author. But the father insists that he is not thinking deeply, but rather crying aloud the reason of my sufferings and that he and his family were born of an author's fantasy and then denied life by him. The manager can give them their stage life, and the stepdaughter tells him not to abandon the characters like the author did. The father says the manager shouldn't give up on some of the characters, but instead should modify them. Players and the manager finally agree that the last scene will happen in the yard, where everything is ready. Manager starts to teach the boy how to behave. The son tries to leave, but the stepdaughter stops him by saying, he has to stay here, indissolubly bound to the chain. He won't act out a scene with the needy mother, who is sure that the scene really happened. The other characters use threats to get the son to do something, but he says that the father is trying to write the story instead of them and even changes it for his own benefit. A manager asks the son what really happened, and the reluctant son starts to describe the horrible events. The manager looks over and sees the child killed in the water, and the son says that the boy had eyes like a madman's. The gun goes off all of a sudden behind some trees, and the actors pull the boy's body out. They are so shocked that they can't tell if he is really dead or if it's just make-believe. The manager yells, to hell with it all, as the curtain goes down, but the father says it's real. About the author. 
Luigi Pirandello was born into a wealthy and politically active merchant family near the Sicilian city of Gurgenti. He starts to write stories at a younger age. When he was 13, he moved to Palermo with his family and became interested in writing. A few years later, he turned down the chance to work for his father's business for good. Instead, he chose to study philology at the universities of Palermo, Rome, and Bonn, Germany. In 1891, he earned his degree with a paper on the Sicilian accent of his hometown. He married Maria Antonetta Porcellano. When he got back to Rome, he taught Italian and started writing and releasing fiction. He wrote several stories and his first play. Pirandello's book The Late Mattia Pascal and his essay L'Humorismo, which was translated into English as On Humor, became his first big hits. He wrote a lot of important short stories, novels, and plays in the 1910s. Right you are, if you think so, and the rules of the game are two examples. Six characters in search of an author and how well Henry IV were became famous all over the world. In the 1920s, he briefly joined the fascist party, which got him a job as director of the Teatro di Arte di Roma. But in 1927, he openly turned against the fascists, and he didn't seem to decide what to do with them again for the rest of his life. In 1934, he won the Nobel Prize in Literature for his brave and clever revival of dramatic and scenic art. He died in Rome two years later. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.